joints in the body are most important for mobility and function. Uh, some of them act as hinges, some of them act as fulcrums. They have different functions depending on the joint that you're using them for. Uh, but the important part is to try to get you mobile and to try to help you to accomplish tasks. When those joints aren't functioning appropriately, it's difficult to function not only as a person, but uh, as an individual. So joint replacement is a resurfacing of either the hip, knee, shoulder, whatever it may be, uh, in which the idea is to relieve pain from osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and a variety of conditions. Uh, it's revolutionized orthopedics, not only in the number of surgeries that have been performed, but in the pain relief that it's provided and the additional function that it's been able to afford people uh, throughout the past several years. I see patients all the way from 20 year olds all the way on through the geriatric population. Most of my patients are in the geriatric population with standard uh, osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. But I even have some younger patients who have bad diseases such as avascular necrosis and other traumatic injuries that have led them down the joint replacement path. Joint replacement should be a last resort for everybody. Um, it's one of the, it's while it does help relieve pain, it's not necessarily a first line treatment for anything. But once you get to the end of the road and people are starting to lose parts of their life from the arthritis and the pain, joint replacement can really help people to not only relieve the pain, but get back parts of their life that they've lost. If you're living with joint pain, uh, the best thing you can do are different lifestyle and activity modifications. If those things fail to provide relief, then joint replacement becomes an option down the road for those patients. So the most common joints affected are going to be the hip and the knee. Those are the two most common ones that I do. Uh, the knee is probably the most common followed by the hip uh, after that. Uh, typical symptoms for hip and knee arthritis are going to be loss of motion, pain. Oftentimes people start to see deformities and bowing of their legs. Uh, the hip is a little bit more subtle and oftentimes missed. Uh, hip pain is typically groin pain, but can also refer as knee pain, so it's sometimes misdiagnosed that way. Uh, the, uh, the hip patients tend to have a little bit more shortening of their legs and leg leg discrepancies and oftentimes they'll have a little, little bit of a limp which is a little bit more of a subtle finding and oftentimes misdiagnosed and difficult to interpret off off the bat. Everybody's different when it comes to pain. Pain is not a measurable thing. Everybody responds to it differently, everybody reacts differently, everybody perceives it differently. It's a very subjective thing. I tell everybody when it comes to joint replacement, the only time to consider it is when you're starting to lose parts of your life because of the pain. When you're starting to lose things you wanna do, whether it's tennis, golf, walking around the block, whatever that may be, parts of your life that you find important, when you start to lose those, that's when it's time to consider joint replacement. Just for normal primary hip and knee replacement, Success stories are all over the place, and uh, it's a very highly successful procedure, especially with the hip. Um, I have 87, 88-year-olds that I do hip replacements on. They're up and walking the same day. I have all my patients walking within six hours of surgery, whether it's a hip or a knee. I also do young people. I've had 20-year-olds that I've had with a vascular necrosis of the hip that I've replaced hips on. Same thing, get them up walking the same day. Uh, the younger patients, I even some will let go home uh, the same night, so they don't even have to have a night stay in the hospital. So it's a rapidly changing and rapidly evolving field, and we're getting lots of success stories because of that. Uh, one example, I have a young guy who is a construction worker, came in with terrible groin pain, limiting his life. He was starting to lose uh, interest in his job, having trouble completing some of the tasks with work, concerned about whether or not he was gonna be able to go on. Got a hip replacement in him. He went home the same day, didn't even have to spend a night in the hospital. Had him up walking within two weeks. He was walking without pain, pain-free. Now that's not 100% normal, but that's his story. Within eight weeks, he was back to his construction job, working, doing everything he wanted to do. And he actually came back later and I replaced both of his knees already. So he was a tough guy, bad arthritis, but he's had a great success story already. I had a, 87-year-old lady, same thing, with terrible hip arthritis. 
you know, very frail lady. You got to be very careful with some of these. She had a little bit of dementia as well. You know, and we discussed with the family and her, she was starting to lose her mobility more and more and didn't want to get out of her home. But her hip was causing her severe pain. She didn't know what she was going to be able to do, whether or not she was going to end up in a nursing home. And in long discussion, we decided, listen, I, I do a minimally invasive approach to the hip, which is a little faster recovery. And we decided to go ahead and try and uh, move forward with it. She was up walking home within 24 hours of surgery, back home, back doing stairs, doing great. At eight weeks, she had more function and more mobility than what she had preoperatively, and she was an 87-year-old lady. So age isn't the problem, it's really health that's the problem. And through some of these minimally invasive approaches and not doing general anesthesia and minimize some of the risk, we can accept some of these older patients who are having some issues with uh, hips and with knees and still get great function and great recovery from them. Preparation to me is a huge thing when it comes to hip and knee replacement. We spend a lot of time educating. We spend a lot of time going over the procedure and making sure there's no questions. I don't want any surprises during the whole course, the whole recovery. Uh, surprises lead to people being dissatisfied, people being scared, and we don't want that through the course. So you come in, we have an initial evaluation. We find out if you're even a candidate for hip or knee replacement. Once that happens, uh, we then go through a lengthy process of medical clearances. We also go through a process of a joint education class and physical therapy class to make sure that you're better aware of what's going to happen, what's going on, and what to expect. After all that's been completed and you've passed through those steps, I then see you back before surgery to answer any further questions, go over the, the procedure again, and go over everything in detail. Throughout the hospital stay, I come in, I see you personally, I make sure every single day that everything's going smoothly and that everything is what you expected. Um, while you do see the rest of the members of the team, I personally make sure that everything's accounted for and you're the one, I'm the person, I'm the doctor who's gonna be seeing you during that hospital stay, not somebody else. Uh, in the post recovery period, you have access to us all the time. We give you uh, quite good access to us, the PAs and, and myself personally. So that way, if there's ever questions or concerns, you're always welcome to come in anytime. Recovery for the hips is a little quicker than the knees, but typical recovery is about two months for both. Uh, it's a little slower for the knees, a little faster for the hips, and that's pretty normal, especially since the hip is a little bit more of a minimally invasive procedure. But by two months, most people are doing quite well and are functioning and back to their work and the activities they wanted to do. Differences between what I do and what other people do in hip and knee replacement, uh, the biggest thing is gonna be the minimally invasive hip. Uh, I do an anterior approach hip through a small incision. It's a faster recovery, uh, no hip precautions, no funny toilet seats or pillows between your legs. So it's a faster recovery, a little easier for the patient. Um, the advantage with the knee, I, of course, everybody's got different techniques and ways of doing it. I think my way's the best, other people think their way's the best. And that's only for the per, uh, patient to really decide who they're comfortable with. And, that, and we try to make you comfortable. I'm never going to push you into surgery. I don't want that. I want you to be comfortable with me and I want you to be comfortable with your decision. Uh, when it comes to down the road or other problems, I can certainly handle those. That's the advantage of the additional training and having a joint specific surgeon. If there's complications, we don't have to ship you off to New York. I, we can take care of it. I handle lots of revisions, lots of big revisions. I handle other doctors' revisions. Uh, so it's, it's not a problem. We're able to handle pretty much any hip or knee problem that comes to us. And you don't have to worry about being shipped down to New York or Philadelphia down the road. If there's a problem, we can take care of it here. When you're looking at getting a joint replacement, I think the most important thing to do is to find someone who's a high volume joint surgeon, someone who specializes in joint replacement only. While other doctors and other orthopedic surgeons are trained to do hip and knee replacements, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what they specialize in directly. You wanna be with somebody who does specifically hip and knee replacements and really does a high volume and mostly that for their practice. Uh, those people have been shown in the literature and in the studies to have lower complication rates, higher success rates. So you want to be comfortable with that and you want to make sure the person that you're going to sees a lot and a high volume of hip and knee replacements. One of the unique things that we do that's a little different from some other people is we do and I do a rapid rehabilitation protocol. Uh, the advantage of that is I get you up early. All my patients are up and walking within six hours of surgery. And some of my younger, healthier patients, uh, we can transition them to surgery centers and an outpatient program 
uh, that we have specifically set up and delineated for our people. So that way you never even have to spend a night in the hospital. It's nice, you get to sleep in the comfort of your own home, you get to recover from your own home, while still having the same level of care that you would have at, if you were going to the hospital. It's provided a little bit of flexibility, uh, lower costs, and I think the higher patient satisfaction when we look at it for some of those patients. Once you get home, we have direct access to not only me, but the PAs as well, uh, at all times, 24 seven. Uh, we're always available and we're always willing to call you back and go over any issues that you might have. Uh, we also uh, set up with, home, with people home physical therapy, and for some people we set them up as an outpatient physical therapy. So we have direct access to therapists, and nurses, and other people inside the home as well once you go home. So you never feel abandoned. Before surgery, the best thing you can do is strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. Preoperative physical therapy, whether it's self-directed or through an actual direction of the physical therapist, to strengthen the muscles and to coordinate the muscles are imperative to any type of successful joint replacement. Afterwards, I have pretty strict protocols that we go over and we discuss in order to try to, to successfully navigate the recovery process. And it's difficult to say what exactly will make you recover faster since everybody's different, but we do different things with motion and strength training during the recovery course to try to speed you along. I think the best thing that we've done so far is getting people moving faster. We don't keep people in hospital beds anymore. We don't keep people down. I have people up and walking the same day as surgery. So that way people are mobilizing, moving, and getting into the recovery faster. So the primary care doctor with joint replacement is always intimately involved. We uh, try to send notes and letters to let them know what's going on with the patient. But if a patient ever requires surgical intervention or anything beyond therapy and an injection, we always send them back to their primary care doctor to get medical clearance and to discuss with them the, the, the physical and mental options with surgery along with what we've discussed with them as well. I think it's important that they stay involved because they know the health of the patient the best. And if there's ever any concerns with the primary care doctor what's going to surgery or anything along those lines, uh, we like to stay in constant contact with them about that and get their approval and their uh, recognition that surgery is a reasonable option for the patient. The last thing we wanna do is actually hurt somebody on an elective procedure. Uh, the patient benefits from outpatient joint replacement in multiple ways. I think the first thing is you get to recover in your own home. Uh, having the ability to recover in your own home away from other people's bacteria, other people's flu, other people's illnesses uh, helps to minimize uh, nosocomial or hospital-based infections. Uh, the other advantage is that it's cheaper. Uh, outpatient total hip and total knee replacement is certainly cheaper than staying several days in a hospital stay where a lot of the recovery costs can uh, be incurred. Other advantages are just in patient satisfaction. I think people are just overall happier recovering at home rather than being stuck in a hospital, stuck tied to somebody else's schedule, being woken up throughout the entire night. And those are things that I've seen in people who have done the outpatient path. Where joint replacement has come from is a, a long and lengthy question. It's coming from people putting in glass hips that lasted a year to the metal on metal craze in which a lot of those hips got recalled and pulled out to where we are now, where I think most hip replacements are gonna last 25 to 30 years and a lot of knee replacements are gonna get good survivorship at 20 to 25 years. Where it's heading is uh, difficult to predict, but I think the biggest thing is it's going to end up in the outpatient centers. I think that because of the lower costs and the better rehabilitation protocols that you're seeing, better anesthesia, better blocks, better implants, that we're gonna end up starting to see more and more people recovering at home uh, rather than in hospitals. The, uh, some studies are predicting that almost 50% of joint replacements by the year 2020 are gonna be done in an outpatient center. I think that's a little high, but I think the trend is heading that way, that we're gonna start seeing more and more done as an outpatient. I think people have to be ready for that. People have to be ready to recover with that. And I think it's gonna do good things for when it comes to recovery and therapy. And it's gonna do good things when it comes to healthcare costs as well. I did my medical school and residency training up in Ohio. And then I did my fellowship training at uh, NYU Hospital for Joint Disease uh, in collaboration with uh, the Insole Scott Kelly Institute. I was a full year uh, hip and knee only fellowship based on uh, complex revisions, 
minimally invasive uh, hip and knee techniques and also hip preservation. I spent a great deal of time doing things, did a significant number of cases in just hip and knee and got a great comfort level in that. Since then, I've been uh, progressing and doing that in practice and uh, transitioned that into our program that we have here now uh, in uh, New Northern New Jersey. So the joint program is relatively new with the Orthopedic Institute of New Jersey since I've joined. It's a good uh, transition since we have uh, so many capable sports medicine doctors and non-operative orthopedists and PAs and nurse practitioners who treat people through their mild to moderate arthritic symptoms, their sports injuries, and so on and so forth. Uh, since then, some of these people have kind of come to the end of the road of where things are working with arthroscopy and injections and physical therapy and need somewhere to go. This has uh, led us to the joint program there at the Orthopedic Institute, where I can transition those people instead of out of the practice into somebody that they don't know and aren't comfortable with and keep them locally in uh, the Hackettstown, Morristown areas and get them treated in high quality care. It's great being able to help people with simple joints get back into life and get back into the things they want to do, get back into golf, tennis, whatever it might be. I think I get a lot of uh, fulfillment out of the, what I would call disaster surgeries, where I've had hip and knee replacements that have gone terribly wrong, that have come to me from other people, and we've been able to fix them. People that have had pain for years and years from a knee replacement that's either worn out or put in poorly or whatever it might be, to be able to get people relief when they think nothing else is going to be able to fix this. Uh, some of those are the most challenging and the biggest surgeries, but those are oftentimes the most rewarding in the end when people are able to get relief and function back after a knee replacement.